Tokyo moves 40 million people daily without chaos overwhelming their transportation networks. Singapore runs on a single card system. Most cities can barely handle rush hour without complete gridlock overwhelming their streets and highways. The difference is not money or population size or government funding. London's underground opened in 1863 and still outperforms systems built last decade with modern technology and engineering. Heavy rail works because it is completely separated from street traffic patterns. No lights, no crossing cars, no delays from surface problems disrupting schedules throughout the day. Tokyo's Yamanote line carries more people in one day than entire countries move in a week across all transportation modes combined. Moscow's metro proves this works anywhere in the world regardless of climate. Built during Soviet times, it moves 9 million riders daily through stations that look like underground palaces with marble columns and crystal chandeliers. When you need to move massive numbers quickly across long distances, nothing beats heavy steel on dedicated tracks with frequent service intervals. Heavy rail fails when cities try saving money by sharing space with other transit systems or freight operations. You have experienced this waiting 15 minutes because freight trains blocked your commuter line during rush hour. Moscow and Tokyo systems work because they prioritized capacity over cost from the beginning of construction. That kind of smart planning deserves a like. Bus Rapid Transit in 2005, Los Angeles launched its Orange Line, proving how effective Bus Rapid Transit could be. Their Orange Line BRT carries 27,000 people daily on former freight railway tracks through the San Fernando Valley Corridor. BRT works by giving buses dedicated lanes and making them act like trains on rails. No mixed traffic, no stopping at red lights, just pure efficiency moving people faster than cars stuck in traffic. Nantes in France perfected this concept with their innovative busway system connecting suburbs to downtown employment centers. Dedicated concrete tracks, platform level boarding that eliminates steps, traffic signal priority systems throughout the network giving buses green lights. Passengers cannot tell they are on buses instead of trains, except for much lower construction costs. A subway costs 200 million per mile. BRT costs 20 million per mile for similar capacity. BRT's genius is its flexibility, something heavy rail cannot match. When ridership grows, you add more buses immediately without construction delays. Try that with subway construction timelines spanning decades. When demand shifts, you reroute buses overnight. Heavy rail routes are permanent for decades. Cities like Curitiba built entire comprehensive networks for the cost of single subway lines. Istanbul moves 800,000 daily passengers through their metrobus system using dedicated highway lanes avoiding traffic congestion. Light rail Melbourne's trams carry 200 million passengers annually, reaching areas heavy rail cannot. Light rail works in the middle ground between buses and subways filling coverage gaps. Too expensive for low-density suburbs, but perfect for medium-density corridors where development clusters around stations, creating walkable neighborhoods and commercial districts. Strasbourg transformed their entire city centre by replacing car lanes with modern trams running through pedestrian areas and shopping districts. Air pollution dropped 30%, retail sales increased 20%, property values rose along tram lines creating economic benefits. It does not just move people, it reshapes neighbourhoods into walkable, desirable districts. The secret is street running with signal priority systems giving trams precedence over automobile traffic. Trams weave through city centres where heavy rail would require expensive tunnels costing hundreds of millions, but get priority over cars at every intersection. You have seen this waiting at red lights while trams sail through intersections unimpeded. Portland's MAX system drives transit-oriented development, creating dense, mixed-use neighbourhoods. Smart cards remember the hassle of needing exact change for the bus. London's Oster cards eliminated that friction completely in 2003, revolutionizing public transportation. Now you tap in, tap out, and systems calculate optimal fares automatically across multiple transit modes. Tokyo Supercard works on trains, subways, buses, even convenience store vending machines throughout the metropolitan area seamlessly. One card, one payment system, seamless transfers between any transit type or operator. When payment is unified, the mental barrier between taking a bus versus a train simply disappears. The real innovation is not the technology itself, it is the comprehensive data collection capabilities providing insights. Agencies can see exactly where and when people travel, allowing them to optimize service. Smart cards transform transit planning from guesswork into a science. Cities worldwide copy this integration because it eliminates friction and provides valuable ridership analytics for system optimization. Cable cars, San Francisco's cable cars are tourist attractions, 
But New York's Roosevelt Island tram is serious daily transportation for thousands of residents. When terrain makes traditional transit impossible, cables go where nothing else can. Tulus operates the world's most advanced cable system today, connecting suburbs across rivers and difficult terrain. Their Tello system connects a university and a hospital over a river, moving thousands of passengers daily where ground, level transit would be impossible. Construction costs 80% less than equivalent bridges or tunnels would cost for similar passenger capacity and service frequency. Cable systems excel in specific geographic situations that challenge other transit modes significantly crossing water bodies, climbing steep hills, connecting isolated areas to main networks. They are not universal solutions for every city planning challenge, but where geography demands them, nothing else works as effectively or affordably. Medellin uses cable cars to connect hillside communities to employment centers downtown, transforming neighborhoods previously isolated by topography. Commuter rail, Paris Ra trains travel 60 miles from city center to distant suburbs in under one hour during peak periods. These systems work by connecting separate cities into a single economic region. The economic impact is massive workers can afford homes 50 miles from job centers while companies access talent pools across entire regions. You can live in an affordable small town and work in an expensive urban core without driving through congested highways daily. Germany's S-Bahn networks perfectly connect entire regions. In Frankfurt, it offers a direct link to the airport, while in Munich, it connects the city core to the wider Bavarian region, boosting both commuting and tourism. This works because success depends on frequency. Hourly service fails, but trains every 15 minutes transform commuter rail into regional rapid transit. High speed rail, Japan's Shinkansen carries more passengers between Tokyo and Osaka than all airlines combined on that route daily serving millions. High speed rail works for trips between 100 and 500 miles. Too far for conventional rail, too short to justify airport security hassles and delays, France's TGV connects Paris to Lyon in two hours at speeds of up to 200 MEF through countryside and urban areas. Airlines cannot compete when factoring airport security, check-in time, and travel to city centers from airports. High-speed rail delivers you downtown to downtown efficiently without airport hassles or weather delays affecting schedules. Economic impact extends far beyond transportation alone creating regional development patterns. Property values rise significantly near high-speed stations, attracting businesses and residents. Business meetings become feasible between distant cities on same-day schedules, increasing economic productivity. Spain and China expanded networks rapidly because economic returns justify massive investment costs over time. California struggles because they forgot this fundamental lesson about connecting major population centers efficiently. Ferry systems Sydney Harbour ferries move 15 million passengers annually across water routes where bridges would cost billions to construct and maintain over decades. Ferries thrive where geography offers natural water corridors, providing a cost-effective alternative to land-based transit. Venice built an entire civilization on water transit systems. Their Vaporetto network connects 100-plus islands through canals where no other transit could possibly operate effectively. Modern cities with waterways rediscover ferries as practical transportation, not just tourist attractions for visitors exploring waterfront areas. Ferry services on Sydney Harbour will run more frequently with the Return of Services Act axed last year. In all, 140 services will be restored and another 25 added on Parramatta River. The Inner West will receive most of the new services. The updated timetable will also be linked to the bus network. Ferry advantages permanence without expensive infrastructure, investment requirements or long construction timelines. Roads adapt to changing demand patterns seasonally, but harbours and waterways do not become obsolete like elevated highways eventually do, requiring replacement. Cities worldwide are rediscovering them after all. Water provides a reliable corridor that never becomes obsolete. Thank you all so much. To get your name on the thank you board in the next video, you can reply in the comments, click the join button to become a member, or use Super Chat. As always, thanks for liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next one.